Down there with John is the executive director, Dean Young. Here's John. Indeed I am, Gary. Uh, you know, you and Michael always do that uh, little uh, trivia uh, game during, the, during, during a contest. And I got one for you. What do Denzel Washington, Martin Sheen, Jennifer Lopez, and Shaquille O'Neal have in common? Well, the answer is every one of them, each of them, uh, credit the Boys and Girls Clubs of America with shaping their lives. Um, it's Youth Day here at Lafayette, and who better to talk to than Dean Young, the executive director of the Eastern Area Boys and Girls Club. Dean, welcome to the Lafayette Sports Network. John, thank you for having us. Glad to be here. I'm glad to see you're still doing what you're doing. And, La and Lafayette is our, our backyard. I'll tell you what, it's a great place for us to come. We'd like to be here as often as we possibly can. So thanks for having us. Uh, the partnership is, is terrific, Dean. And uh, golly, 35 plus years for you. What keeps you going? You, I know that you probably see miracles every day. You also see some challenges every day. Uh, how do you lace them up and uh, uh, go at it every day? You know, it's been 39 nine good years. I always say to everybody, the good times that way the bad. But, you know, we've seen some kids that go on to colleges and have done well. Uh, we've got their kids now coming back to the Boys and Girls Club. We've also seen some challenges, and, I, you know, I mentioned to you earlier, that's one of the reasons why we roll up our sleeves and go to work. It's for those kids who need us the most, you know. You heard Denzel a little bit earlier talking about the impact that it had on him. Uh, you know, growing up as a kid myself, I attended a Boys and Girls Club, uh, and I know the impact, the positive role models that, that come in the lives of these kids that we shape, and that's what keeps me going. Dean, it's been studies have shown that uh, young people make bad choices between the hours of 3 p.m. and 9 p.m. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, your organizations locally, your impact on the community. Well, one of our strategies really is is to respond to exactly what you just said. So we have an, something that's called Campaign 3 p.m. Those critical hours are 3 o'clock to 7 o'clock. When parents are transitioning from work, kids are coming home from school, they don't usually have a safe place to go. So at the Boys and Girls Club, they can enter our doors. They're guaranteed to be greeted with a smiling face from a mentor, a staff person, a volunteer, somebody who's going to greet them and make sure that they're going to have a good day, even though they may not have had, had one yet. We're also going to make sure that we, we feed them. So they're, they're eating right after school, too. So between 5 o'clock and 6 o'clock, all the kids are being nourished. Just prior to that, many of the kids, uh, at least uh, 12 each day, are in the kitchen actually themselves preparing meals, learning how to take advantage of a lifestyle uh, that's going to be able to get them through life a little bit early on. You know, Dean, uh, hearing you talk about this, uh, the, these programs and, and what you do, uh, it occurred to me just now, and it's not scripted, but what would life be like in the community without the program? Sometimes we just don't know. Um, instead of uh, being stationary and having come, kids come to you, which they do, uh, you've also tried to do a little outreach. You had a program going on in the West Ward. Uh, talk about the status of that and maybe some of the challenges with it. I'm not sure it's still functioning. Well, we, years ago we had a, a teen center. Uh, it was in the West Ward. Uh, we were located just by Conningham Stadium where they play all the football games with the Red Rovers. Uh, we were doing a phenomenal job there. Had a lot of kids coming through the doors, and we went through our transition into our new development. And so uh, for 2008, 2011, we were out of there, and, and uh, we started to see funding start to shift. Uh, so I believe that teenagers, those are critical years when things are really difficult. You know, you think you're a young man, you think you're a young woman, you think you can be independent. Immortal. Yeah, and you don't need mom and dad. And, and you know, Boys and Girls Club for us and for those kids is critical. That's where they were going, to college tours and campus visits. But when funding shifts, it has, it, you know, an impact. And, and so we eventually had to uh, withdraw from the Easton Teen Center and uh, try to find a way to make it possible for the kids to get to the Boys and Girls Club on South Side. Well, it's a, it's a, a little commercial here for someone, uh, whether it's state, local, or federal government, or maybe just local folks to help out, and uh, that would be uh, uh, certainly an oasis in a troubled area. Uh, we're here on Lafayette's campus. Dean, you and I have started, uh, you and Easton, me at Lafayette in 1980, so that gives us a lot of years. Uh, the relationship between the campus, the college students here, their community service, and your program uh, has been pretty remarkable as well. Lafayette College students, you know, I always, whenever I can, give a shout out to Lafayette College students who are phenomenal in a number of ways. The student athletes come down to the Boys and Girls Club along with their coaches. Uh, this past year we had the whole entire volleyball, women's volleyball team down, challenging our kids, but teaching them first how to play the game, really how to play the game, and then actually go ahead and having play with them, mentoring them for four hours at the Boys and Girls Club. You know, on one day last this past year we had both the baseball team and the basketball team now. So you can imagine that. <laughs> and so every room was occupied with these positive individuals from Lafayette campus who took time out along with their coaches to come down to the Boys and Girls Club and nurture the mind and the body and the soul of the kids that we serve. 
and we're more than lucky than just to have the sports folks. We had fraternities and sororities. Phi Kappa Psi raised $9,000 for our club last year, came down and did basketball clinics for us. We've got the Girl Scouts coming down from Lafayette College, <laughs> tutors and after. I could go on and on. It's phenomenal. Dean, it, it's too bad. We could talk for a long, long time. We're running short on time. We didn't have time to talk about a mutual friend, a local hero, Marty Zippel, class of 49, who's been a big supporter. Dean, miracles happen every day. Heroes walk among us every day. Here's one of them right here. Back to you guys.